So here we are in uh, Nuke, in um, Nukex, the non-commercial version is what I'm using, so you can download that for yourself. Now once you open it up, I'm going to press S on the keyboard and open up the project settings to set this to our frame range, 150 frames. Uh, I'm going to the res set the resolution to, um, where are we, uh, HD, okay, and then read in, so tab, just like in uh, Houdini, tab on my keyboard, R for read, and then I'm going to read in my fire render first of all. We just got 120 frames here, but you know, depends how many you rendered. So there we go. And just grab the uh, embers as well. So you can see them there. I'm going to put them like this. And we also need that background. Okay, so I've got that here in a texture folder. Perfect, so we got that, this, and that. Great, so um, let's just zoom in a bit and start working on, on these. So uh, I want to play around with the color a bit. So I'm going to drop a color correct. I don't like having all these open, so I'm just going to change this to one, and it just leaves one set of parameters. Okay, so in my color correct, I'm going to come up here to the master tab and to the gain and then click on this, no, sorry, on this. And then I have access to each color individually. I'm just going to push the red up a bit. By the way, sorry if I didn't say press one to visualize. So we can uh, press one on the color correct and two on the original. And then we can uh, kind of skip between the two to see the results of what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to push this up to about there. Okay, we add a little bit of green in there. There we go. Looks good. And let's see what else do I want to do. I want to add some glow to this. So tab and then type glow. Press one on that. Okay, and you can see the result there by default. You can also, you can press uh, one and two to see the difference, or you can also, if you select the um, the node, just press D to disable it. Uh, what are we viewing? There we go. And then press D and it will disable it. So, um, probably a bit over the top there so I'm going to bring the brightness down a bit to about there so that's fine okay and then lastly let's add some motion blur okay so make sure it's the source that's plugged in and we got lots of inputs but it's the source that we need so you can see the results um, basically it looks at frames before and after and add some blur to it, right? And blurs between those frames. It kind of interpolates between them. So um, we have samples there, so, you know, to kind of remove, it's not too bad here. It's definitely, we need much more with the embers. We'll do that in a moment, but the samples will just give you a better result. The more samples, the better, really. Um, the shutter time is the length, so how long. Um, we don't want it too long in this case, just one. Um, and the rest will leave as it is. With the um, paid version of uh, Nuke, you get some more functionality with the motion blur. Now, let's do the same for the embers. Okay, so I'm going to drop a color correct here. Connect that up there. So I just want to add a little bit of saturation to this. Okay, just a tiny bit, 0.05. Just give them a bit more color, not too much. And then some, I'm gonna put some glows on these as well. Just one on that. So for th this one, I'm gonna go pretty bright, 1.5, 1.5.
and the size I'm gonna bring it right down to about there so we got you know it's kind of tight around the the uh, particle itself okay might bring the let's see brightness down a bit something like that 1.5 maybe there we go and then <clears throat> excuse me and then what I'm gonna do is add another one here okay so we got kind of two layers going on All right so in this one uh, leave the brightness at 1 and the size at 15 I'm just gonna leave them at defaults I think and then also here we need a motion blur okay and there you can see um, why these samples are more are important here so we need way more try 10 until we stop seeing these kind of dots let's just push it up to 50 you know it's calculating it perfectly quickly there we go so we get something uh, like that which looks great so let's uh, bring these two together is a merge um, I'm gonna drop my fire as my B as my background why is not working there we go let's get rid of that merge them together I'm gonna set this to so we have different operations how to merge them together lots of different ones I'm gonna set this to uh, screen okay just helps um, them kind of uh, g it gives a bit more depth in my opinion okay um let's bring in the background as well so let's get out see let's give ourselves some more space so the background will be our b plate and the fire and the sparks here and let's see that okay we're getting somewhere now so to kind of fill out this space you know to get a sense of fire um, kind of a load of fire in the foreground um, I'm just gonna grab this I'm gonna drop a transform okay oops I don't want it there I want to connect it to the fire just the fire and then what I'm gonna do is scale this up and flip it round and blur it and then that will give a sense of fire in the foreground Okay, so um, let's scale it up first. Make it bigger, about something like that. You don't want to go over the top until you're, you know, losing too much resolution. We are going to blur it, so that's not too much of a problem. Something like that, and then I'm just going to move it over. Obviously, make try to make sure. Oops. Uh, oops. What am I doing? There we go. Make sure you don't do something like that where you can see the edge, but I'm just moving it over um, just so we don't see the, you know, that it's the same fire duplicated basically. So I'm going to move it over minus 300 and move it up 200. Something like that. Okay. And then what else? Like I said, we can mirror this. So we want a, not vertical, sorry, horizontal flip. So you can see the results there. And one more, just want to blur this. Okay, good amount of blurring on this. I'm going to put the size up to 10. Okay, that'll give a sense of kind of depth, you know, that this is in the, like it's in the foreground. And then we can just connect this up to Oh, no, we want a, yeah, another A plate. Let's take a look at that. There we go. So, that's pretty much it for us. So now you can play through it, get a sense of, um, you know, of this going on. Go to the start. You can see how it's, 
it, it gives a, you can, with this kind of second plate, you can see the effect there a bit more. Kind of gives a nice sense of depth to it. Um, but yeah, you can go back and play around with the values, with the glows, the color corrects. You could try adding more of these, you know. Um, but that's it pretty much. Um, I'm going to go to save this out. We need a write. Okay, and in here we're going to write our um, directory. So I'm going to save it to my D and it's going to be in. Uh, let's just, well, I'll just make a comp node here. You know, you can put it where you want. Comps, for example forward slash um, yeah you can anything you write here just like Houdini uh, but make sure you tick this um, whenever you make a node a folder which doesn't exist it will create it for you which is kind of handy so this will generate a new folder for me called comps um, I'll call it uh, corridor fire let's say okay um, we'll say version 1 forward slash Corridor fire, and then instead of the dollar uh, f that we use in Houdini in uh, nuke, we need to use this hash symbol. Okay, so put four. That will give us a frame padding of four, and then whatever whatever a file format you want. So maybe PNG. Okay, just leave that, and then you can hit render, um, and then it's got our inputs as one for some reason, but we'll do. Uh, we've got 120 frames of the fire, so we'll do 120 frames. Okay, and then click OK on that, and I will render out for you.